Hello everyone, welcome to Talking Swish, we're here, um, we're recording a little bit earlier than normal because we don't actually have any special guests this week, so it's um, here with me is um, Larry, myself of course, but also the special co-host of this show, Stephen Dykeman. Yep. How you doing Stephen? Uh, I'm excited man, this is going to be a fun episode because uh, you know we had Zach Allen on two weeks ago and mm-hmm. we... We delved a little bit into some of the cards that had already been spoiled, but now the whole set's spoiled. I think it drops, what, thir- Thursday? Is that Thursday in the card- Arena. I don't okay. have any idea when paper releases. Don't yeah. even think about it. I, yeah, I don't care. Me. I don't care. We'll be playing Arena, yeah. so, yeah, I don't... Um, but, but, I do want to make sure that people aren't confused. Delve is not in this set. No, no. no. Delve, <laughs> Delve is not in this set. That was no. not a, a poor pun from me, although, you know, it's definitely one that I would make. Oh, um, yeah. But, um, we're going to get into the spoilers briefly. Yeah. We're not going to jump right into them. A few things we need to touch beforehand. Um, you had a tournament over the weekend. Let's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's, yes. Let's talk about that. What was it? So, yeah, funny story about the tournament. So, it was the uh, I think it was Mythic Qualifier. I uh, whatever what those. Called. I think they're called Zendikar Rising Qualifier yeah. Weekends now. Whatever. Basically, it's the tournament you get invited to if you, you know, get um, a certain ranking in Mythic. I was like 390 or something in Limited. Um, um, you got to be top 1,200, either yep. limited or constructed. But yep. yeah, go ahead. Yep, so that's the ranking you need. I got that, so I was qualified for this tournament. And funny enough, uh, last week, I, you know, we even brunched it on the podcast. I was playing standard, testing standard, because and I you thought... And ter- you told me you looked it up and it was standard. Oh, yeah, no, and to be fair, I... I thought all of them were standard. I didn't know they did any that weren't standard. As, as far as I knew, everyone was standard. All of them that I've done before have been standard, but it's been a minute since I've done one. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I tested Sultai. You know, I was pretty confident with where I was at with my list. Did you have to I, craft for that at all? Did you have to use wild cards? You know, I think I did for maybe like an extinction event or something, but it's did not going to bite me. And did you have standard. to do it for the big boy before. that you were playing? The little um, mirror tech. Um, the big boy 6-6. Six, six. Oh, Doom Whisperer. No, I already had Doom okay. Whisperers, fortunately, okay. uh, because I've played them before. I didn't know if you played yeah. them in previous. I, like I had one of the very first decks I played when Doom Whisperer came out was like a Ooh. Sultai deck that had like six mana Vraska. And yeah. It was a mid-range deck. Um, anyway... Uh, so, so tested standard a ton, well, uh, not a ton, but for a few days, felt pretty confident with where I was at with that Sultai list, and come to find out, you know, I'm looking at the information for the event on Saturday night or whatever it was, and I see at like one in the morning that the tournament's going to be historic and not standard. So, you know, uh, all, all the testing went out the window. I basically hadn't tested at all for the (laughs) event. And uh, so naturally, I just said, screw it, I'm going to play LSV's 75 from uh, the Mythic Invitational. Was it Mythic Invitational? Yes, yes. The Mythic Invitational. And uh, I went 7-0 day one. Um, there were multiple spots where I looked like I was in trouble and going to lose and, and got out of it. Um, the deck was really, really good. Bone Crusher Giant exacted my opponent like three or four times. It was really funny. A one of Bone Crusher Giant went face multiple times for exactly yeah. lethal. Um and then day two didn't go as well. I went 2-2 um, in my second loss because you can only lose two. I had some really unfortunate uh, variants on my collected companies in games two and three. I was in pretty okay position to win both games, but uh, Coco was not my friend. Game two, I just straight up whiffed on one. And game three, I did not hit the things I needed to, so I lost the mirror. Um, but overall, the deck was really, really good. Uh, liked it a lot. Um, I would certainly play it again, I think. Um, you have no Jun Sacrifice, definitely a good deck. Um, I could see something being addressed from the deck in the near I could future. Um, I do also think that they might address something from Gollum. Just, um, because of how the actual gameplay is, I don't think it's um, a concern because it's busted. My big thing is like people wanting to make concerns over a card deck being busted. The thing about how um, Muxus and all those kind of things... Um, the problem with those kind of decks in the format is somebody actually qualified in that tournament you were in, right? Yeah. They were playing Blue White Control uh-huh. with two main board Graph Diggers Cage. Yeah. That's a clear sign of yeah. an unhealthy format. That's a very modern 
modern yes. thing. And cause... Jerry Thompson on his podcast, and uh, Jerry Thompson mentioned ba- the like Ballmeister and all them previously yep. on the podcast on um, their podcast was mentioning it that historic in general is closer to mo- modern right now than it is standard. Yep. and that's wild because mo- like really like a lot a lot of these cards have just been out of standard like. Jun Sacrifice is pretty much a standard deck. Yeah. It's only been known really in standard and v- vaguely in Pioneer. Yep. So the fact that it, we're doing things just like modern right now and, and approaching it, because another reason it's like modern is because you got to look at your um, sideboard. you got to be like, oh, I got hate cards for this deck, this deck, but I can't have all the hate cards I would actually right. necessarily want compared to like a smaller format like standard. Yeah. And the problem with Cat Oven too, man, is like, there are games too where you like cage them and then they like don't draw the cat the cat oven combo and they don't draw collected company and they just corvold you and you just die to that oh, it wasn't even corvo that i was like every time i did it because i played that blue white list a little, yeah. little minor um solution but nothing that would change this outcome by any means is i i would keep a hand i was like okay this has cage i'd play down cage and they go all right Roxanne. butcher butcher oh yep that and That's I just the thing. sit there and yeah. I'm like, well... Yeah, exactly. Well, I wrath you now, and I die. <laughs> and I lose. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, the deck the deck has these really busted combos. Like, Coco is just a busted card in general, and then it's got Cat Oven. But it also can just be an aggro deck. Yeah. So, like, you know, Cage... You know, you don't want to play Cage against the freaking like... You know, the deck that's going Butcher, Butcher. You yeah, know. what are you going to do about... Like, even Cat, Butcher, Butcher... That's you're, a curve because die. you, yeah, you, you took one to from die. the cat entering. Yeah. Now you took two on turn two. Mm-hmm. So now you're at 17. Ideally, this is saying that you didn't shock or anything to play that cage. Yeah, exactly. You didn't draw the hollow fallen draw. Yeah. You know. The deck's super powerful. I mean, yes. um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. Could certainly see it being addressed uh, at some point in the future. Um, yep. Who I, knows? Still advocate. You're always fine. Oh, yeah. You're. you're Euro. Was there? There was what? I mean, Manfield won with but Euro, that's not but really he was the only Euro deck in top eight. Yeah, he was the only Euro deck in top eight, and in fact, he might. I, I haven't looked at results, but like Sultai was not that popular. Uh, Brad Nelson Brad was Nelson, on the same list because they they, they worked on it together. Yes, they which I assume their whole team, which is Gen, is it Genesis still or is it a new team now? I, uh, For I, a while, they were on Genesis. I'm not sure I what they can they're... answer that. Um, but the thing about when you get to that level, like you're not a only um, te- uh, testing with your teammates. Yeah, you do test with other teams. Yes, and like talk well, to for other example, teams. Um, Brian Brondu and BBD, who um, Brandon else is roommate, yeah. also on the Bass Bros podcast. Um, they, they do um, work together, but they didn't work on and in this one because um, BBD ended up playing Ketha's combo because he wanted to play while he was going to have fun playing. Oh sure. Compared to what he thought was the best deck, which he. He vocally said he thought Dog Goblins was the best deck to play. Interesting. Okay. And, but he played Kethis because he thought it was a really good deck. Really good and really fun. Obviously, he knew it was the best. And that's, that what separates them from normal players and their level players is being able to, okay, I know this ain't the best deck and here's why I'm playing it. Yeah. But this ain't the best. Yep. A lot of players like to overshadow and they like to do this thing, the eagle trip where they're like, no, th- I think this is the best deck. No, it's not. You yeah. know it's not. Why are you lying to yourself, yeah. to others? Like just isn't worth your time you know yeah but no well more or less euro's fine um they could ban this and i wouldn't be sad like, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't yell at them yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like i wouldn't sit here and be like how dare you wizards yeah, yeah. this is a really messy yeah. magic card man. but it has to come in um historic in general it's like modern has that card even been relevant in modern ever Maybe that one weekend that one guy top aided with mono green when Urza right. was like the best deck. You remember yeah. that? I think we were maybe. at that open together. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I think I think we were at that open together. It was right before, very very shortly before quarantine. But some crazy person, Indy. Yeah, was, I think so. No, Indy was pioneer. Oh, you're right. No, it wasn't that. No, um, it was. I don't know if we've been, actually been. Maybe going. you weren't with me on that. Trip. Well, maybe it was the open that I saw you and James when James was working on the it's standard the one, deck. That it Sunday. was the one where I top aided the the um not the open but the classic with mono white. Were you at that oh, one? Oh, I remember. I, I wasn't at that one, but I okay. know that one. Okay, it was that weekend. Okay, that weekend, some maniac brought mono green ley line, basically the pioneer deck without the like with all the band cards in it. 
uh, and they were a Karn deck too, yeah. and they were just like turn three um, lattice locking people, I guess. Just like crazy, crazy amounts of mana and just like <laughs> locking opponents on turn three. Um, it was a really good weekend for Karn because obviously Urzo was like the deck. So, yeah, no, uh, that week did a top eight. But no, the, the point here is no, Nissa has not really done anything in modern because modern is that fast usually and that's how and that's broken feeling. yeah because what are you gonna do you go nissa and they're like all right well yeah mux just kill you yeah nissa isn't what wins them yeah. the game it is thought sees and the interaction yes. into nissa and then nissa's oh, like their finisher thought sees is just so horrendous against um goblins yeah I, it, it's not the best um, it was funny this is before the um the envy was played i actually went back and listened to the bad sports podcast today while i was working and they were talking how they hate the black red version. How it has all these low impact cyborg cards like Magma Sprays, things like that, playing the thought seasons. They're like, oh, that's exactly what we want to see off the top of our snooper hit off our. And mushrooms. we, the best part of that is we literally had that exact scenario come yep. up on on stream. And I was telling you the next day when it came up that I think because we were talking about mono red top eight, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not surprised because. When we flipped a thought seize with Snoop, I wanted to die. Like, yeah. I was so angry. It's so bad. Yeah. It's inexcusable. And then, um, another reason that they mm -hmm. um, were talking about the addressing of that debt of, of goblins in general, too, because we have to cover this um, invitation because it was the big event over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is the fact that Snoop alone, like, it, it like negates what you're able to do. Like, you, you already have to deal with that card. This is a two drop that says. You could be in this land go like say they're up against blue white for example their land go blue white's not letting them do anything like no one would counter every single thing you do not only is snoop keeping the full grip of cards in their hand because they're just playing off the top if they get a crankle on top they tap snoop put them creatures play yeah, now now there's such a big issue there yeah. and then where you can do wrath them then they go untap mux issue like yep like, you can't reliably play these banned decks. You can't play, and which is a Nissa deck, and it just isn't good enough. Yeah, yeah. The only reason that I think Soltai could get away with it, because they do play Nissa, and they have a better package of the two mana spells. Yeah. Like, eliminates yeah. Aether Gust. Really and stuff good like two that. mana spells. They are still a Thought Seize deck, which is still a very good card. Of course. Just not in Goblin specifically. I don't like it, but I like it in a lot of yeah. other stuff. But yeah, no. Um, I would the, keep it in in the Soltai matchup. I wouldn't yeah. cut it in that matchup. No, 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 no. And. No. Yeah, um, and the thing is, like, it's not the best against goblins, but I, I have no idea. I, I would like to go back and um, see. I still, I, I still will rip a snooper. Oh, I, absolutely. I assume it stays in your deck. Like, yeah, no, there are a lot of worse cards. I don't think you bring in additional. No, 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 no. Actually, you wouldn't bring that. I'm going to pull up, pull up his list. Yeah. list. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, let's see. Mythic Inventational. Jeez, yeah. I can't spell it. But all this to say is that, yes, the Sultai version doesn't have to, like, sit there and hold up, like, counter magic and things like this. I mean, it does play some Essence Scatter. It plays an Essence Scatter in the main deck. His version did. Did um, it? Um, yeah. It played one main. Um, I know it plays scatter. one main because I looked while I was playing the uh, Sultai deck in, in day two. I, I went and checked out Manfield's list because I was curious because I had been Essence Scattered. And then my opponent essence scattered me again, so I knew they weren't playing a carbon copy of of uh, Manfield's list because they got me with two essence scatters game one. But okay, either way, one. either way, um, you know, uh, this deck just it has a really nice curve, really nice low curve. Um, Languish is awesome against goblins because it kills everything. Uh, Extinction event can definitely line up awkwardly against goblins if they go like Snoop and a Lord, for example. Well, you know why the main purpose, like, again, mm -hmm. I, I got the more information from the my mindset behind this because yeah. I actually listened to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, the reason is because with open deck lists, you can play around things so easy with language, yeah. only having language or extinction event. Yeah. So, for example, you only have them language in your deck. They could just make a 5-5 five five and make things awkward for you. Yeah, yeah. And then vice versa, if you only yeah. have Extinction, but they could be like, okay, let me make sure I don't swarm the board with yeah. a specific mana cost and make that as complicated as possible. Either way, all this to say, I definitely like Languish against Goblins better than Extinction Event in most scenarios, yeah. just because of how Goblins play. And then they have a know? couple of it, um, Witch's Vengeance does obviously would come in that matchup. Yep. Cries might be good enough, I don't know. But the point is... Black just gives you some really nice sweepers that are cheap, aren't going to draw your opponent's cards. You get the two-mana removal, you get the thought seize, so you get to play the nice early game, and then you close them with Nyssa or Euro.
Um, yep. And that's usually, you know, what this deck is doing. Or it's you, basically a control deck. Or you deck. can splinter to them by going this in the Crassus. Which, yeah, exactly. Yep. Which is so hard to beat in most um, circumstances. Yep. On post board, you get cards like Elder Gargaroth. Yep. That seems like a pretty big boy. That's how Goblins. I died. That's how I died in my my third game uh, in game three. I I had ley lined them and then they beat me with with that card. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, we know how good that card is. We, yep. We know very well. <clears throat> um, I want to see. Let's um go ahead and look at Matthew Nass's mono black gift list really quick. Yeah. So again, I I really I like his list a lot. I like um you know when we played it on stream, I talked about how the obliterators felt a little weird to me. Yeah. I like that he just said, screw Obliterators, I'm just playing all the Chupacabras, yeah, I'm, like I'm going to just kill my opponent's stuff, and I'm going to buy it back and kill more stuff. This deck interacts really well, um, it's right up Matthew Nass's uh, alley, it's a combo deck, and Matt was saying he felt the best card in Historic is Phyrexian Tower, so he felt this was the best Phyrexian Tower deck. Crokey's will, uh, will agree <laughs> with Crokey him. would agree with him. Yeah. Grokey would, would approve of this deck choice. But no, I mean, this is, is a great deck. Um, I wouldn't mind, you know, uh, at some point revisiting this version of the deck on stream. Because uh, obviously I think this one's going to perform even better for us than the other one did. And the other one performed pretty well too. Yeah, no, so it's both, a good deck. It's it's a good I deck. I definitely think that's a deck that is going to have legs in the long term Oh future. yeah, I don't think anything's getting um, banned out of the that. The deck I while. think is really cool that I haven't actually played myself. But I've played against this deck so many times yeah. and that's the um rectos arcanus um yeah. lore stack yep this got second right? yeah was this the second um, place did he get second? I, I don't know i i don't know okay either. i can find the i know he was top four he was top four for sure but i thought he had earned a spot in the finals if i remember correctly i think he was the upper bracket finalist and then uh manfield was the lower bracket finalist if i remember correctly i could be wrong um but that is what i oh well, we'll find out yeah but we're figuring it out um, in the meantime, though. Oh, no, Nassif beat him. So, Salvato lost in the lower bracket to um, <clears throat> to Manfield, then. Must be. Yeah. yeah. Okay, either way, the deck uh, top forward, and the deck is really sweet, man. I mean, it was really fun to watch him on camera. Um, the deck really has a lot of cool tricks. There's a lot of sweet stuff going on. Um, this, honestly, is kind of... It's kind of like a historic shadow deck in a way. Is kind of what it feels like, or maybe like a, a a Jund deck. That's that's kind of the game plan. It's like this hand hate spell removal spells, all very cheap. And then it gets them back with Arcanist. It just really gets rid of all your your resources and then beats you in top deck mode, basically with like yeah. a Croxa or whatever, you know. Yeah, no, the event was very cool. Um, they had that technical difficulties, which. It was a big damper. Wizards definitely should have took a different approach on how they handled that. I didn't like what they decided to go with. I don't know if you saw what they did. What did they do? So they um played everything on Twitch on Monday like it was live. I see. The issue, all the players in there were were forbidden essentially from talking to anybody. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. For a whole twenty four hours, so they couldn't talk to friends, even outside of the, like the magic. They just couldn't talk to nobody. They had to like stay in isolation, ignore people for twenty four hours. Like they couldn't do anything. Wow. <laughs> okay. I don't like that approach that they did. Like you're already, like it's just not a good look. I don't think. Not a big fan of that. That's fair. A lot of players that were in the top eight said that like, they felt actually the biggest mistake they did was actually make it top eight because it actually felt like a, more of a punishment than a reward. And that's that's not how it should be. Like you just top eight. One of the biggest events, like, it should have a great feeling at the end of the event. You shouldn't have any negativity attached to it. And that's yeah. not a good look. That's fair. They definitely need to figure something out. Like, that's that's just not okay. Um, why The players shouldn't be punished because you're having technical difficulties. That's which, fair. Because they could, uh, one thing they could have did is just be like, okay, here's who won. And we're going to post it all to YouTube tomorrow so you all can catch it. They could have done that, yeah. Like, why not just do that? That, that seems, seems like the simple. easy easy fix. Like, yeah. I just don't understand. I can see But that. Not, not my call at the end of the day. Just don't agree with it. Don't think they should do that going forward. Fair enough. Um, this week, um, we do have a new set coming out. And uh, there's Jeff Hoogland is actually hosting an event. Yep. Um, Hooglandia or whatever. Hooglandia. Yeah, whatever number 20 or whatever, whatever it is. It's not actually number yeah. 20, I don't think. But, yeah, he's been holding... A lot of events, what, is it once a month? 
Um, I don't know if they're technically once a month. Since quarantine started, and, and was even before quarantine, was yeah, he doing these? Um, he's been a big advocate of the historic yeah. format. Before, up until recently, there hasn't actually been support for historic for um, big tier tournaments. And I still don't think I actually don't think there would have been if not for the quarantine happening. I agree, but that's not that's besides the point. What yep. I'm, the point I'm trying to make is um, Jeff Hoogland has been a big has advocate, done a really good job. advocate for historic, and it's fun. Yeah. It's a fun format, even and, even with the way it is now. It's fun. It's an enjoyable format, and especially if you just like want to hop in a um, you know a. a I forget what they're called on arena, but if you just hop in a basically a league on arena, it's not quite a league, but you got to get to five wins and get a bunch of gold. Um, but if you just want to hop into one of those, you can like try stuff out and stuff. That that's how I find a lot of fun in historic. Sometimes is just trying brews and those. So, but it, it's a it's still until this event, it was kind of an open format, um, and that's fun. I think you know. Yep, um, and I don't, I don't even think the mo- the format's completely closed oh, by it's any not. means. It's not. Um, we have a new set that's about to drop yeah. in a couple yeah. of days because that could have an impact on it as Certainly. well. But what I was saying is, um, Jeff Hogan holds these events, and then he's sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. He writes articles for them, puts videos, puts covers on there, so they actually um fork out some store credit to go towards the winning. Oh, do you know the structure of how he does his events offhand? Mm, no. Okay, so how he does his is... Um, oh, isn't it the first two losses? Yes. Okay. Once you get the two losses, you're out. Yep. There's no cut the top eight or anything. It goes until it last man standing. That's kind of sweet. Uh, that's why it's so awkward when you look at, like, the when they post the top eight online, like MTG Goldfish, which, by the way, that ain't where we should be looking at Deckless anymore. Actually, MTG Melee has a whole database now oh, that they're they? organizing nice, it nice. way better than MTG that's Goldfish, really I nice. hear. That's really nice. Um, so I definitely recommend checking them out. But no, so it's first the two losses, and that's why you'll see somebody where like, oh, second place X one, and then uh, or X O or like yada yada, and then you'll just see these random like, like statistics on here, and then um, he holds them. They've all been historic. They might have done a standard one in the past. So I'm pretty sure they've done at least one, but standard. He's very vocal about his opinions. Like he is not a shy fella. Um, love him or hate him. He's very vocal. Um, he did decide that he's going to do a standard one, and he scheduled it because he scheduled them at really good times. So in addition, and he scheduled it for this Saturday for the new standard, which that's going to be awesome. We're going to be spending some time talking about some decks that we're going to be working on um, because I'm going to be playing in that event. Yep, and I would be playing in the event if I didn't have uh, prior commitments. But yep. I have prior commitments, but that's fine. Uh, um, you know, I'm I'm confident we'll we'll get you with a good deck, and hopefully you can do yep. really well. And then in addition to that, there's also the Mythic Society um, set roulette yeah. event this weekend, and I may play in that. That's one. on that, Sunday. That one's pretty funny. Um, that's on Sunday. That one is including Zendikar, M11, Eventide, Eldridge Moon. Yeah. Um, a few other sets. I can't. My mind's blanking on them right now, but. Check out their um, website. Check out them on MTG Melee. Yep. It's all posted on there. Follow them on Twitter. They're a great organization. They run a lot of tournaments as well. They actually run a monthly historic one, I believe. Oh, a big, wow. a big historic event. Nice. So I definitely recommend checking them out. Um, I think I, I played in their last one actually. Yeah, I went O two. I played a bad deck. I played zombies. I just didn't care. It didn't go well. Um, Fair. But no, the de- the ma- decks are pretty good this weekend. Not decks, but events are pretty good this weekend. For that on um, Mythic is Society event, I'm probably leaning toward trying to build either a mono red style deck. The other deck I thought about playing is I just played the mono green on Valakid style deck. I'll just put one together. Yeah. There's a lot of really good cards that we can make that happen. Yeah. Um, but standard wise, we'll be getting into what I'm the deck selection for that. In a couple days on Arena, we have um, Zendikar Rising. Um, yeah. That is going to be launching live. Um, right now, you can do the pre-order. Um, $50 gets you 50 packs. $50 also gets you the Mastery Pass, which includes some sealed pools, some limited pools, all that good stuff. Definitely good deals. I usually do both on each occasion. Don't know what I'm doing at this time, but but we do have the set coming out. Um, we have touched a lot of the cards when we were um, talking with Zach Allen. We're not gonna. We're gonna try to not revisit any of those cards that we've already mentioned. But between then and now, we've seen some new cards, and we're gonna go through some of those. Um, we may not not hit some of your favorites at home that you 
heard about. We're going to try and hit most of the rares and mythics if we can, because yeah. that just makes sense. But, like I said, we've already went through some. We're yep. just going to try to hit new ones. We're going to start with white cards. We'll start with one card, which I think is very very good, and that's Felidar Retreat. Um, this is a 3-1, a 3 and a white, in a white enchantment. It has landfall, for those that don't know what landfall does. When a land airs a battlefield, um, it triggers. Yeah. Um, and when, when the triggers, different abilities happen based on the card. This card says when the land enters the battlefield, we get to choose one of these abilities to go on the stack. We get to create a 2-2 two, two white cat beast creature token. Or we can put a plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance till the end of turn. Oh my god, I didn't even realize they have vigilance too. Yeah. This card is good. This card feels like it might be incredible, honestly. And you yeah, know, just a good magic card. This man. card is nice. Like I'm just imagining th there might be another good band deck again. Who knows? Because this card in Euro. A plus, like I really want to do some of that, but like, I mean, think think about it this way, right? On turn four, you play your fourth land, you play this card. Turn five, you play another copy of this card, and then you play Fabled Passage. That's two two twos. Fetch two more two twos. You got four two twos on turn five already, and now every land is either a Gavany Township plus some, or it's just two more two twos. Yeah. It's kind of like a mix of like Field of the Dead and Gavany Township yep. in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah, this card, and, this card's got it. And keep good. in mind, we got so many cards that we're gonna be going through that are our lands that or a spell. Yep. You can be like, oh, I don't even want to play a spell. I'd rather just play this as a land. Boom. Like those also work really well with Euro. Yeah. So yeah, a, maybe some sort of like Bant ramp deck would be would be good. Um, also, you know, maybe some kind of like counter synergy with the conclave guy could yep. be good with this. Yeah, like a green white bird. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, you could do that. And this could just be really good in like a token strategy. Yep. Um, it's pretty easy because you just go make a bunch of tokens yep. and you like growing them. Yep. Um, very easy ways to assemble those. Um, next one's squad commander. I'll let Steven take on this one. All right. Squad commander is three colors, one white. It's a core warrior creature. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one, uh, core warrior creature token for each creature in your party. So automatically, it's a 3-3 three, three that gives you a 1-1. One, one, and then for every extra type you have, you'll get an additional 1-1 one, one, uh, up to 4. So if you had a full party, it could be a 4-mana 3-3 that three, three gives you 4 one, ones. That probably won't normally be what it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, oh, and gain indestructible until end of turn. And what's a full party? Just so uh, we're, uh, we're going to only cover it yeah, this one time. Yeah, because I, I forget it a lot. Yep. Uh, cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard okay. are the four types. Um, yeah, believe me, yeah, I will need to read that again many times to know yeah, what is in a party. a lot of people, and that's why they've yeah. been very good about putting them putting on, each, on of the, cards, each of the cards. Yeah. But either way, at, at minimum, this card is a 3-3 three, three that gives you a 1-1 one, one when it enters, so not terrible. And then uh, the the ability it has is just really, really good. If you if you have a full party, giving everybody plus one uh, and indestructible, I Seems mean, Seems a little difficult to get a full party. Oh, yeah, for the, sure. With this kind of like strategy, usually yeah. those kind of things... And especially when you're mixing wizard and white. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I think is going to happen is this card is just going to be a really solid limited card, for sure. Because yeah, even at face value, it's a 3-3 three, three that gives you a 1-1 one, one for 4 mana. Typically, that's good enough. Yeah. But a lot of times, it will give you more than a 1-1. It's one, a 2 one, for 1. Like, yeah. And then if it's getting any more, that's just extra. And it's just really good value. And I'd imagine, you know, there will be some decks in limited that will actually amass a party onto the board and then get that... that um, ability and standard it's going to be really 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 hard to set up a party like getting four different creature types building yeah. your deck around it not having your opponent interact with you at all um you're not usually going to get the whole party Party's going to be very big and limited I yes imagine. It, it will be sweet and limited for sure yep. um but either way cards a very solid limited card probably not going to be much of a standard player but you know i'll i'll be wrong if i have to be it could be good i don't yeah, know we never know um, there's only a couple, two other cards that we haven't talked about already. Um, one of them is Legion Angel. Yeah, we um, did not talk about that. Yep, one. this is um, two and two white, flying for three. When this is a battlefield, we, we can reveal a card we own named Legion Angel from outside the game and put it into our hand. So if we decide we want to play some Legion Angels in our sideboard, um, we can go ahead and be like, hey, we trigger, reveal it from our sideboard, puts it in our hand. 
good little card advantage, um, little spell. It's going to make deck building a little interesting. That's because... what I love about this card, right? I don't know what the right number is in the main deck at all. My goal, I think that naturally, says 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, that's what mine says, too. Um, or maybe you just go 1-3. Who I, knows? Yeah, it, depends. But, it really depends. But really, like... <clears throat> It's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to take a lot of testing. And who knows if it's even good in yeah. general. Yep. Um, that's yet to be determined. But the card is very cool. Very cool I like card. the design. Like you said, if you ever opened this in Limited and all got lucky enough to open two of them, it would be so funny to just play one in your main deck and then whenever you Yeah, get you to might play as well. It, yeah. Yeah, at that yeah point. playing the second one in the main deck actually seems like a mistake at that point. Unless yeah. you just really need two four mana flying three through four threes which you know if your deck isn't great you might need that but you would love to be able to play this in your sideboard yep sure, so. and then the other one is um lumericum aspirant this it's, card looks really good yes to me. um one in a white one one human cleric beginning a combat in your turn put a plus one counter and target creature control that's an awesome ability that's a really good low card. curve yeah and it doesn't because at face it doesn't value, have the swing or anything. right at face value this is a two mana two two you play it on your first this main is what mono white wants right exactly this is perfect this card is awesome and not only would it be good in mono white but again i bring up conclave the conclave guy yes this card in the conclave oh, guy yes. what on earth i think that that's actually what, super good i saw Something this like card the, yeah, yeah this and is, i was thinking conclave well yes, we were speaking like yes. either yesterday or the day before when i was like I wonder if Conclave is going to be good in the format. This, this, this is why I was thinking is exactly it. what you need right yep. here. Yep, that is really, really good. Would not be surprised at all if a green-white counters deck emerges with like him, Conclave, the Felidar retreat thing that we talked talked about. Excuse me. Yep. Um. But yeah, no, agree. Um. So yeah, that's that's the end of the white rares and mythics that we have not covered on previous episodes. So we're going to move on to blue now, I think. Yep, um, we're going to start out with this rogue. It's, um, have we talked? We Did we talk about this? Oh, we have not talked. We'll, we'll get to that one next. Okay, all right. Um, we're going to go glass pool mimic. Um, two and a white. It's a shapeshifter rogue. Rogue is a very important um, creature type in this. Yeah. In this format coming up. Yeah, party. Um, when this enters, well, not just that, not there's actually yeah, yeah. going to be a rogue deck from what it looks like, based on what I've been hearing. <laughs> um... When this enters the battlefield, it could be a copy of a creature you control, except it's a shapeshifter rogue in addition to its other types. Very good card. And it's also a land if you ever need to. You can decide, I don't want to play it as a creature. I can play it as my land drop. And it taps. It comes in tapped, and it'll be a blue mana. Um, card's really good. Usually those shapeshifter style effects are pretty good. Especially in the like rogue ability, because a lot of those rogues are going to have like enter the battlefield triggers and things like that. It's very good. Or, like, in that deck, let's say, for example, they just want to go, they have a bar where they're like, we're going to just go on the beat you down plan. I just got two three ones in the air. Like, And I was telling you earlier, something I really could see happening is a lot of the rogues just naturally have flash. The one mana black one has flash. Mm -hmm. uh, Brazen Borrower has flash. The one that makes all your flash spells one less mana has flash and is a rogue. I could very easily see rogues becoming a a rogue deck that also plays Slither Wisp in it, and you just copy Slither Wisps with this card. Like and you could play sudden, you could play Slither Wisp because it's free, but yeah. I don't think it'll be necessarily a flash deck. Right. Like right by any means. But, but it can kind of be a mix because all well, half the rogues have flash as it is anyway. Which oh is no! Really when cool. when you start doing things like that, that's kind of old saying of playing too many eggs in your baskets kind of thing. Could be so far um, when I've and to be fair. We don't have the new cards yet, but so far in the 2021 format, the the most impressive blue black decks have had Slither Wisp. So that's that's where I'm I'm getting that theory from. We'll see what happens, um, but either way, this is a cool card. Clones are good, and the fact that it's right. a rogue is nice. Right. No, for sure. Um, you said you wanted to cover this one. Yeah, yeah, we got it. I mean, if we didn't talk about this, that's just silly. This card's yeah. hilarious. Uh, Cherix the Raging Isle. Two blue, two colorless, legendary creature, Leviathan Crab. Spells your opponent's cast that target Clerics the Raging Isle. Costs two more to cast. Uh, he is a 0-17, and you can pay three mana to give him plus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of islands you control. <laughs> this card's funny, man. I love this card. Yeah. I, I don't... In limited, it's got to be pretty okay. Like this seems really annoying in limited. Mm. You're never getting through this card with anything. <laughs> you either kill it or it never no. doesn't block, but, and then later it kills you. 
Like, my, this I, I have sick. a new goal in standards. You okay, ready? I'm ready. We're going to cleave this. Ooh. <laughs> We're going to cleave this one time. All right. That's our new goal. Are the new lands... Um, do they do they have basic land type or no? No, they, no, okay. no. Those being fetchable would be a disaster. Would be really. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, because you could grab them, but to come in either side, like it'd be a yeah, wouldn't be this wouldn't be a good time. Okay, the other next card that I wanted to talk about is um inscription of insight three and a blue sorcery has kicker for two and two blue. We're right here if you didn't okay. know. Yeah. Um, um, it's a mojo spell. We choose one of these abilities. If it was kicked, we could choose any number instead. We could choose all of them if we want at that point. Um, return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands. Scry two, then draw two. Target player creates an XX blue illusion creature token. X is the number of cards in hand. And you can do those abilities, you know, yada yada. Um, card's good, man, being a sorcery is such a downer. It's too bad it's a sorcery, but... Honestly, like, I didn't read the last mode on this card. If this card were an instant, it might actually just be, like, too good. Like, this would be Glimmer... It's basically Glimmer of Genius without the energy with a lot more modes. Um, and if you could, like, hold up a counter spell or create, like, a 6-6 six, six at instant speed or, you know, draw two, scry two, like, that's, that's all really good. So, I, honestly, even though this is a sorcery... The modes on this are very good. This is probably still just a good card. Like, I I, I like this card. Um, obviously, for an instant, I think it would be a great card. But I do still think this is certainly a playable card. And we'll certainly see some standard play. It seems actually pretty good to me. And then the times where you get to kick this, oh my goodness. That's a lot of value. Dull bounce, some, some creature, and then scry to draw to. Um... I could see this being a real card for sure, especially in like ramp strategies like Euro decks, for example, might play this. Mm -hmm. um, I like it. I think this is actually a pretty good card. So you know, that looks like because they they spoiled a, like almost all the blue cards at the beginning. So we're gonna just go on the black cards. Okay. All right. So let's take a look here. Um, no priest of oblivion. We have not. Yes, this yet. is on. Uh, that's actually what the one I was looking for. I just don't know him by art by the same or name, right? Yep. Um, so no priest of oblivion. It's a card that everybody in the podcast has been high on. I'm oh, high on yeah. it. How can um, you not be? Like, Vampire cleric. Um, it's a two one. Um, it has kicker for two, for three in the black. It's a one in the black, so it's a two drop. Um, when it's when it is battlefield, if it was kicked, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield at no condition, no none of that. Just bring them back, and it's a two-one. Um, just, just being a menace life linker for right. a two-one is just good enough. For anyone who played standard um, a few standards ago, will remember how annoying Glinsleep Siphoner was to block. This card is just as annoying to block. Uh, it also has life link, so it's going to swing races a lot. And not only that, uh, it obviously it's not going to get you the card advantage like Siphoner did. But it still has this, like, end-of-game kicker, like, give me a lot of value on it. This is a good card. This is a very good card. Uh, black aggro decks are going to love this card. Even, like, black mid range decks might enjoy this card. Like, even, even in, like, I don't know, some kind of uh, build that's, like, maybe Sultai, you pl either play Null Priest on turn two for some aggression, or, like, late game, you Null Priest back a Euro for another Euro trigger randomly. I don't know. But the card's good. I mean, very, very good card. Um, and I'm excited to see what, what decks will uh, take advantage of this guy in yep. standard. Because there will definitely be some. I agree. And then we have our Inscription of Ruin. Um, this is two and two black. <clears throat> it's the Moldra spell for the black um, decks. So um, choose one. Um, uh, you get to choose all of them if it was kicked. Target opponent discards two cards. And return target creature card or converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Destroy target creature card or converted mana cost three or less. Um, the, when I talk about this card, I'm talking about the rogue deck because this actually making your opponent discard two cards. A lot of their stuff you want to synergize with having eight cards in your li not library but graveyard. It kills euros. Can't mind. They don't actually care if you're drawing cards, can't mind, because they're making you mill a lot of cards right. with what their creatures do. Yeah, yeah. So if they have a spell that just kills Euro, and ironically, they could actually, later in the game, they could be like, kill Euro, make you discard two cards, like, 
and return time. They could return like almost anything. Like, this card is really good. This is a this, good. This magic is a card. good magic card, and not not only any any black aggressive deck will love this card because uh, a mind rot is fine. Uh, the reanimate on a two drop or less is is very solid. Very good. Um, and then yeah, the the destroying a euro or you know whatever destroying something that's three or less, the card's really solid. The modes are all good. And they all will have use, and then the games where you get to kick this will just be awesome. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I really like all the inscriptions. Um, I think they're all going to be very playable, um, and I'm, I'm interested to see where, where they go. Uh, um, but I, I expect them to be. I agree. Good. This is a card that Jerry Thompson is very high on. Yeah, um, I I'm haven't actually surprised. got to. No, not the, oh, sorry, sorry, the sorry. one that we're about to talk about. I haven't had fully a chance to look at it, but um, it's Skyclave Shade, one and one black, two and a black to kick it. Um, it can't block; it's a three-one. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two one-one counters, so it would become a five-two. This is the one I told you about. Um, yep, landfall when the land enters the battlefield or control. Um, if it is in your graveyard and it's your turn, you may cast it from your graveyard this turn. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot like Scrap Heap Scrounger. It yeah. reminds me a lot of Scrap Heap Scrounger. It's this really annoying two drop aggressive creature that just doesn't stop coming back i mean this thing is just not gonna die this, if I, you don't I, exile this it is just gonna keep coming and coming and coming and there are we, we were talking this week we've got meyer triton for self mill we've got Timeric calls the dead for self mill we've got some nice cards to mill this bad boy. Yeah. And playing lands and just playing them out of our graveyard is really, really nice. What's well, really funny, though, um, to talk about that for a second is, um, do you see those memes on Twitter? No. Where it'll be like, hey, mom, I want this at the store. And they'll be like, we got that at home. And it's like a knockoff version. Oh, sure. Um, they did that with Blood Gas for Dredge. Oh, that's And funny. they're like, we got a Blood Gas at home. And it's this card because it has that landfall trigger. Yeah. So right when I was reading this, I started to remember where I seen this from. No, I think in um like standard and historic, this is actually a really good card. Um, I could actually see this being played in like some mono black aggression decks. Yeah, I could um, honestly. This might even. I was thinking make maybe the pioneer. I was thinking that I was like, is this pioneer worthy? Is the is, question. Is it better than scrap heap scrounger? Not the even close. Yeah, you can't do it at instant speed. That's the problem. Yeah, and the fact that um scrap heap um you know it's. Scrap Heap is just so good. Well, like, Scrap Heap is really similar. Yeah, Honestly. Yeah. It, it's so, really similar, right? Like, the, the upsides of Scrap Heap, obviously, you can cast it off Mutavolt. That, that is a big deal. Um, and that it, the second toughness is kind of whatever. Neither of them can block. So it's really similar in that regard. Scrap Heap has to have creatures to eat, where this one doesn't have to have creatures to eat. You just need to play a land. But I think the instant speed might be what, what pushes Scrap Heap over. Yeah. Um, but it's I do think this card to, is really close. The fact that Scrap Heap gets around Wrath is my big Yeah, that, that is the, the big thing. Um, yeah. But is there a world that these could be played in some conjunction together? That, maybe. That is that, something... That's a real thing, um, for sure. That is something that we'd have to consider. Yep. we got to actually um, experiment with. Um, look at these black cards. There's nothing else here that we haven't really talked about. No, I think we talked about all the other stuff. Yep. Um, where is the land one? Is it this one? No. No. no, it's a... Dip. Oh, the X spell? Go down. Scroll down. Maybe... Oh, yeah. Is it Zoth? No. Keep scrolling. No, it's a Mythic. Why is it not here? Maybe it's in the land area. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can see that. It's so weird because the Strange. white one was there. Yeah, the, the white, white and blue one. And one. the red one right here. We'll, we'll, we'll get we'll back We'll find it. it. We'll find it. Yeah. We'll make sure we cover it. But anywho. All right. We got some um, cool cards. Have we talked about Leyline Tyrant yet? I don't know. Let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, let's talk about it. Because I think this is a very reasonable card to talk about. So, Leyline Tyrant is a two generic, two red dragon. Uh, has flying, obviously. You don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end. And when it dies, you may pay any amount of red mana when you do. It deals that much dam excuse me, damage to any target. I think this card is quite good. Um, you know, it's a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flyer is already pretty solid. Uh, and then just getting to dump a ton of mana in it to just throw at your opponent's face or a creature uh, is really nice. So any excess mana you have on any turn, you can just dump into this guy uh, and later throw it at something. Um, I think this card's going to be quite good. Um, we'll see what happens, but I, I really like this card. 
Uh, not sure exactly where it's going to fit, um, but I definitely think this will be a playable card. Um, yeah. So um, Before we go on to the next red card, I want to cover this card because some yeah. reason it wasn't on our screen. Yeah. Um, and that's Agadim's Awakening. Yep. Um, and it's a, both of their picks is the best um, card that does that because um, on the, the land side, um, you can pay three life and let's come in on tap swamp. Yep. Um, this side is triple black. X spell. Return from the graveyard to the battlefield. Any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost, X or less. This card is pretty good. Pretty good. The fact that you can just return, like, playing these in Loris decks and things like that, where Loris isn't your companion. Yeah. They're very advocate that Loris actually shouldn't be companions going forward, and it right. should just be in your deck. Yep. Because of the companion role. And that Especially might be, with stuff like yeah. this, right? With stuff like, like this. This can buy so Loris back. Like, exactly. this, this one's sweet because... Most of the other ones aren't good at six mana, which is a pretty that that is a, a reasonable amount of mana to get to in a in a constructed game of Magic. When you start getting to like seven and eight in non ramp decks, it's re like like for example, Zach Allen was talking about the white one in a an aggressive deck, but I think that one's seven mana. It is rare that you're playing a game with the white aggro deck and you get to seven mana and you have not completely lost the game yet uh, in standard. Um, so I think that one's not going to happen as often. It might. I could be wrong. But I just don't personally see it happening all that much. Oh, no. That's going to be a land. Yeah, exactly. That loses you three life yeah. in oh, in yeah. a format that early is probably going to be pretty aggressive. So it seems yeah. pretty costly to me. This one, at six mana, you can do a lot. You can get a one drop in, you know, we've got Serrated Scorpion, Whisper Squad, um, various other, other solid one drops. Um, you can get Meyer Triton, the the shadow thing that we just talked about, the shade guy. Um, <clears throat> obviously, a bunch of other two drops. Your three drop, you can get back Loris, Woe Strider, a lot of street, sweet three drops to get back with this card. Yeah, I mean, I think this card is definitely going to have a place in, in some aggressive strategies, and the fact that it can just be a land for you is really nice because it's going to let those decks cheat on lands a little bit. Yep. And you know, decks that would normally be 23, 24 land decks can all of a sudden become like 21, 22 land decks that play, you know, three of this card or whatever. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I definitely think uh, that card has some good potential. So, yep. Um, and I noticed our website is actually not giving us all the spoilers um, because we, there's a couple cards in them. The other colors that we didn't actually get to go over. Oh, that, okay, that um, makes sense because it's so did like seem for white. Small. We have Troll Warden. Okay, it's two and two white, three four vigilance. Landfall with land. There's a battlefield under control. Exile target permanent card you control with mana cost three or less from your graveyard. Okay. When this dies, put each permanent card exiled with this card onto the battlefield under the, its owner's control. So this card just fits really well with a lot of things like white. That you'd be like, I'm just starting to exile. It's really good if you're up against like wrath heavy decks. Could be cool. Yeah. Um, another card that is um, pretty cool. Where did it go? Bear is it me. when it dies or leaves the battlefield? When it dies. Okay, they did make sure. So that, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that card would be I, disgusting if you could bounce it. Um, thundering rebuke is gonna be good. It's an it's an uncommon, but we'll talk about it. It's a red uncommon, one and one red. Four damage to target creature, planeswalker at um, sorcery speed. Card you know. is very good. Yes. Yep. Pretty simple. We had that. Um, and then here's a blue card. This is the blue card I wanted to go over. Um, it's a one drop Roost of Drakes enchantment. Kicker two and a blue. When there's a battlefield, if it was kicked, create a two two blue Drake creature token with flying. Whenever you cast a kick spell, create a two two blue Drake creature token with flying. Okay. Interesting. Um. Oh, and then let's talk about this one. We didn't talk about this. Um. It's two and two blue. Master of Winds. Sphinx Wizard, 1-4. Oh, yeah. Flying, when there's Battlefield, draw two and then discard a card. When you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, you may have this card's base and power and toughness become a 4-1 or a 1-4 until end of turn. It's a cool card. It's a solid card, right? I mean, it's a 2-for-1 at worst. Like, you yeah. play it and you're up a card because you draw two, discard one. So, you know, I think <clears throat> I think that card's pretty solid. Yep. I just... Certainly unlimited. It's going to be a great rare and limited. Yeah, I think that card is actually um, quite good. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, we'll get back to some of these red cards that we were um, talking about. Yep. Um, the other card that I... So, 
I was telling you that uh, they were talking about a combo deck. Um, Gotley um, posted on his Twitter, I guess, in a very rough version. Yeah. Um, one of the cards that it actually plays is um, uh, Nahiri's um, Lithoforming. Lith yeah, go ahead and read that card. All right. Uh, X and double red, sorcery. Sacrifice X lands for each land. Sacrifice this way, draw a card. You may play X additional lands this turn. Lands you control, enter the battlefield, tap this turn. Yep, this is one of the enablers for that combo deck. Okay. It plays this in Lotus Clover, because all those lands you put into play generate mana. I see. Um, and you just generate a whole bunch of mana. You draw your whole deck. Um, there's some other cards that go along with it, okay. too. This card's cool. Um, I don't know how good that deck is. This well. is not. That's not the kind of deck I'd want to play early on, but yeah. if he wants to do it, he can go for it. It sounds fun. Oh, yeah. Um, but I just, I just think a deck that's relying on Lotus Cobra is, is a little... You're going to be a little soft to decks like Mono Red, like just shocking it and, mm -hmm. you know, other aggressive strategies. But I could be wrong. Who knows? Right. Um, but sure. it sounds cool either way. Um, another card I want to talk about, too. Let's scroll up real quick because I, I talked about this, uh, uh, with you a little bit this week is the, the Shatter Skull Charger. Okay. Um, so Shatter Skull Charger is a one generic, two red, uh, giant warrior. He has kicker for two. Uh, he's a four, three. He has trample. He has haste. Uh, if it's kicked, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. And at the beginning of your end step, if it doesn't have a plus one, plus one counter on it, you return it to your hand. Now, <clears throat> at face value, it's it's probably not as good as cards like, say, um, it's obviously not as good as Annex. Annex is crazy good. Um, it's as good as Phoenix. But Phoenix is the, the, the one that's interesting. And I think what's really going to be, what it's really going to come down to is how many, how many decks in standard play, uh, like, sweeper effects right like how many how many shatters and extinction events are we playing against because if those cards are popular this card is really good yeah because i was just, just thinking that reading it, that it, yeah. because it, it basically has a dash it, exactly it has backwards dash kind of you you play it you pay less mana to dash this card whereas i guess that's not even true necessarily because no. with some of the dashers, dashers you paid less. Uh, yeah there was actually i think the only i think the only one that might have been more was heel cutter i think heel cutter was either more or the same yeah but is that because i had about people somebody couldn't block? yeah that was why it was very yeah, good that, heel cutter, that heel was cutter a busted was card well heel not cutter busted was, but it was, it was very good. good it was a very good card uh i think this card's good mm -hmm. uh, i think this card will end up um seeing standard play um I think it's pretty solid, honestly. And it's another really good body to cleave up, too, if, but once you pay the fifth mana, as it's a 5-4, and then the next turn, you know, it's a 6-5 six, six or whatever with double strike. So I think this card's pretty solid. Um, I'm excited to see uh, where that one goes. Me too. Um, the next card is one that people have been giving a lot of crap to this week for sure because they're comparing it to Goblin Guide, which I don't think is the right yeah, You call. can't do that. Um, it's Wayward Guide Hyphenated Beast. Um, it's one red, two two, Trample Haste. Um, when, when it deals combat damage to a player, return a lane you control to its owner's hand. Um, I get why they're trying to compare it to Gollum Guide. I do, but I don't think you really should. This is a weird card. Um, I don't think this is a deck that you, a card you want to be playing on turn one. No um, way. I would definitely, like, agree with, like, some of the pros were saying, like, play it as a two of. You play it as a two of, right? You play it later in the game in yeah. your mono red deck. Yeah. Now you got this one drop red card, which we're going to go over very vaguely. Um, which, let's just go over really quick. Where is it? Um, what's the name of that one drop? Just so that we can be able to explain this a little bit better. Where's the one? What's the name of the one drop? Right here. Um, Akum very, Hellbound. Very good. Hellbound. Akum Hellbound. It's a one, one mana, zero, one, one red mana, elemental dog. When laying there is battlefield, it gets plus two, plus two until in turn, so it becomes a two, three. This is what Mono Red was looking for. Yes. The Hellhound. Uh, let's just talk about, let's talk about Hellhound real quick, because yeah. I think... Mono Red was missing another like key one drop creature. I think that's the one because that card is usually going to attack as a two three for the first like three turns of the game. Yeah. So it's basically a one mana two one mana two two, which yeah. is what aggro decks want. You just want the two power one mana creature. Um, and yeah, the synergy with with Guide Beast is incredible. You're never gonna miss that land drop, so you're just yeah. gonna keep keep getting to do like that. I, said, I like a four two split on those. Yeah. Um, I like four. And that way, because later in the game, land drops are going to be harder. Yeah. And this actually gives you a better opportunity to not let that be a thing. Wayward Guide Beast is also interesting in eternal formats where landfall matters. Uh, I saw somebody post like a, a modern list that's playing the one, the the white one drop that's an O one, and then gets like plus two, plus two, and you play land or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, 
So maybe maybe it'll be good in eternal formats. Yeah, you you generally won't want to play this on turn one. I could see situations where on turn one you play it on one, you attack with it, you bounce your land. On turn two, you attack with it again. You don't have a land to bounce. You play your land, and then on you're a land behind. Obviously, if you're on the play, maybe it works depending on what your hand looks like. Um, but yeah, generally you do not want to play this card on turn one in in any format. Mm -hmm. um, but it's serviceable. And, yeah, playing it as, like, a two-of, I could see for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes because it, it's a very interesting card. Um, not really like most other cards we've really ever seen before. So it's, yeah, it's going to be it's interesting. It's very interesting. Um, and the, the last card we're going to talk about in the red, the, uh, red card selections um, is a Magmatic Chandler, one in a red human wizard, 1-3. If there are four more instant sorcery cards in your graveyard, it gets plus three, plus one. Tap it, discard a card, X on the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them. You may play that card this turn. Card's cool. Yeah. Um, don't know where it might fit, um, but I'm, I'm not ruling it out by any means. Yeah, it could certainly be playable. Yep. It could certainly be Definitely playable. could see it played in something. Yep. Now let's talk about the color that hasn't got much love. Yeah. Um, it's about time. It's a real tragedy. Okay, so let's um go ahead and start with what is this? Orin Reef Ooze, two and a green. Enters the battlefield with a plus one counter. Uh, put, uh, enters the battlefield, put a plus one counter on target creature you control. When it attacks, put a plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one counter on it. Do you remember what I was talking about Conclave? Dude, dude, yeah, yeah. no, I, I this is what came to my mind too. It feels like there might be a deck there now. Um. Yeah, I think there just is a deck there now. We've seen now, we've seen multiple rares that are really, really powerful. Like this one, for example, is so powerful if you can pay off the plus one, plus one counters. Mm -hmm. That two drop white creature is perfect at putting counters on different creatures and spreading them out. And then you attack with this and put multiple counters on everything. This, this card is sick. I really like this card. I do too. Um, I think, yeah, I think the counters deck uh, is definitely something we'll have to um, kind of dive into after this weekend uh, because I could definitely see that. Being yeah, I don't have deck. time right now, but we definitely will. Um, I don't think we talked about this green the stuff. Bailoff? No, this. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about Card Siren's little brother in just a minute. Yep. Um, let's talk about um, Turn Timber. What was that? Symbiosis? Is that what it symbiosis. Is? Symbiosis. Um, four and triple green sorcery. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You can put a creature card from from among them onto the battlefield. If that card has converted mana cost three or less, it enters with three additional plus one counters on it. Put the rest at the bottom of your library and random, random more. The other side is a, a forest that you can pay three to have it come in untapped. This card is really cool. Yeah. Like, this is a really cool card. Yeah. I, I like this card a lot. Yeah. Like, so it can hit any creature, but if it's three or less, it, it gets, gets three counters. Yes. Yeah, no, it's a cool card for sure. Um, right. Definitely playable. Yes. Definitely a playable magic card. Mm -hmm. um, um, and we'll then go ahead and talk to us about Carnage Tyrant's little brother. Yeah, Carnage Tyrant's little brother is an interesting comparison for sure. So I was yeah, playing in the middle. Oh, yeah. It, 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 I mean, it, yeah. it makes sense. Um, so, yeah, Crank Plate Bailoff, five colorless, uh, two green. Uh, a 6-6 six, six has kicker for two generic and a green, so it'll be 10 mana if you kick this. Uh, this spell cannot be countered and has hexproof, just like Carnage Tyrant, but this one also has haste. Instead of trample. Uh, yes. Oh, it doesn't have trample. Okay. Remember the um, other one? Yep, yep, trample. yep. Yeah. If, uh, and then if it's kicked, it gets four plus one plus one counters on it. Um, I honestly kind of like the haste. Like I love I the like, haste. I, li I like this card a lot. I think this one might... I, I, it'll be... It, they they both have their bonuses. Yes. I think this one might end up being better than Carnage Tyrant was because of the haste and because of the kicker. Yeah. Uh, just like 10 you 10 you you lose. It's like something that might happen pretty often with this stupid thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty pretty interested with yeah. this card, and I do not want to be a blue mage playing against that card at all. No. That much. The fact that it can't be countered is like, oh, so funny. annoying. Uh, this card I'm excited for, again, it's going to be really good encounters, and yes. that's Inscription of Abundance. One in a green instant. Instant, I say. Huge. Huge. Um, two in a green kicker. Well, as the other ones, you can um, choose all the abilities if you kick it. Put two plus one counters on target creature. Target player gains X life or X is the greatest power among creatures they control or and or 
target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. This card's sweet. This card's probably going to be in the mono green deck that I'm playing this weekend, which we'll be getting into in a little bit. This card's good. Very good. Very um, good. Um, again, all three modes are pretty reasonable, and the fact that it's just a really, really good combat trick, um, it's it's going to blow people out a lot, and it, it's a solid card. And then the fact that it's good encounters too is really nice. Um, yeah, I think this card is going to be... I, personally, I think this might be the best inscription, but the blue and black ones are close for sure. I They're all good. They're the all reason good. I yeah. give the edge to this one is it's because instant. of instant. Yep. Yes. Instant speed's a big deal for sure. We will see what happens. Uh, but I think they did a really good job this set of balancing these inscriptions. They all yeah. feel playable. They don't feel like... None of them feel like garbage. Um, they did a good job with this, I think. So yep. I, I'm, I'm pleased. Go ahead and cover the Mammoth next. Yeah, because Andu Mammoth is a really interesting card to me. Um, so it's one generic, two green. Uh, it's an elephant. It's a 3-3. Three, three, and then it has landfall. Whenever a land enters under your control, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Uh, and then you can play it as a land, and it enters as a tapped green land, I believe. Um, yep, tapped green. So this card may be good in mono green aggro decks. Uh, and there are a few reasons for it. Um, you already have a, a plethora of very good three drops to play, so you're going to have to like make some, some kind of awkward cuts to play this card, but the fact that uh, Garrick's Harbinger can now hit lands in your deck is really sick, because there, it's funny, when we were streaming Mono Green yesterday, I almost joked and said if only this card could hit lands on one of our, uh, on one of our triggers, well, now it can. Uh, if you play this card, it can hit land drops for you, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And usually this card is going to be a 3-mana 5-5, five five, which is pretty much what you want out of your green 3 drops anyway. So it's interesting. I don't know that it will make the cut, but it definitely is something uh, that I hope people explore and look at because uh, hitting land drops off Harbinger is a big deal. Like There are games where you get stuck on 3 and you want that 4th land for you know Garrick or or Questing Beast, or, you know, whatever four drop you're playing in your deck, or maybe you want to make a bigger, bigger Stone Coil Serpent if you're playing that card in the deck. Um, yeah, and they're just, being able to hit a land is really nice, and then if you are playing this card, it may let the deck cheat on some lands a little bit, so instead of playing 24, you might get away with, like, 22 and 4 of this card, and then you just accept that sometimes you're going to have a tap land, I don't know. Um, but it, it certainly makes deck building interesting, and I would hope that, that some people at least give that card a try. So. Yep. Um, the next card, which I think this card is actually really cool, um, and that's Skew Torn. This card's awesome. Um, two and a green, one, one insect. Landfall. When a land enters the battlefield under control, create a one, one green insect creature token. If if you control six or more lands, you create a token that's a copy of Scoot Warm and Swarm instead. Yeah, this card's cool. This card's really cool, and honestly, this card might go really, really good with the white retreat. Um, I could see this card being awesome with the white retreat. Like if you get into a late game situation and you have like the white retreat and then you play this card, you play a fetch land, you get another copy of Skute Swarm, then you fetch, you get two more Skute Swarms, and then you put a bunch of counters on all of them. Um, yeah, that, that's really cool. Um, I, I'm sure people will try this card. And it yep. might, it and might like I said, the good. counters deck, it seems really good. Yeah. Um, the next card is Swarm Shambler. It's a one drop, <clears throat> zero, zero fungus beast. And there's a battlefield with a plus one counter on it. When a creature you control with a plus one counter on it becomes a target of a spell and the opponent controls, we get to create a one, one token. Um, one and tap, put a plus one counter on Swarm Shambler. So, Shambler. Yeah, it seems really good. And uh, again, in the counters deck, like. Yep, for sure. Deck's kind of building itself. It in, really is. In the thing. We've already covered that one, so we, we are going to go on to the hybrids. Yep. All right, hybrids. What? Akiri we did not talk All about right. yet. Akiri, one red, white, three, three core warrior. Whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card, pay a white. You may unattach equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap... That creature and it gains indestructible until end of turn. Card's cool. I don't expect it to be played much, though. I don't either. Um, it is cool. And, again, uh, if you can make this guy work in limited, he's going to be a house. Um, 
I would not want to play against the stupid card in limited at all. That card no. seems so hard to beat. No, um, that is not. It seems very annoying. Uh, but I, I think, yeah, that's about where it's going to see the extent of its play, at least for the time being. There need to be more cards uh, available for that card to be good, I think. Because we just don't have the number of equipments and good white-red creatures we need yet, I don't think. <clears throat> yep. Um, here's the reason Rogues, I think, is going to be so good. And here's how we... We could get around Euro, like you know, not get around Euro, but I'll value the Euros, and that is Zerasan, the Trickster. Another card that has flash, um, by the way. <laughs> Which I didn't blue, even know about this card yet. Three blue black. <clears throat> um, it's a four four Merfolk Rogue. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may put target permanent card from a player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Um, it also has two blue black, which is doing a ninja kind of effect. Return an unblack. Uh, Unblocked attacking rogue from that you control to its owner's hand. Put this onto the from your hand onto the battlefield. Tapped and attacking. Holy God, that is it's just Nijutsu. Yeah. yeah, that's and you see nasty. why there's uh, some hype. Yeah, on I, rogues. I haven't seen this card yet. Yeah, yeah oh, this yeah. card's really. This good. is the hype that's on rogues, man. Yeah, yeah like, that makes sense. Because we also got this is uncommon. We're using our coming room common, but it's blue black hybrid. Also has flash, flash flying one three. As long <laughs> as the opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues you control get plus one plus zero. Oh. When one or more rogues you control attack, each opponent mills two cards. Dude, like, the rogues deck literally already like I was talking about. We these cards just have flash. Like they just all have flash mm -hmm. randomly on them anyway. So. Now I think Slitherwisp might finally have, like, a real home. Because no, that for card sure. has never had a, like, good home before. He might have found one in Rogues. Yes. Does not um, only... Slitherwisp have Flash? Yes. He does have Flash. So the, the deck will literally have, like, 20 cards and with just, Flash. I don't then think it will Euro the... can match their card advantage. That card, well, yeah, the card advantage and just everything being an instant. Everything. Yeah. The, your spells, the ninjutsu is an instant. You're just playing all at instant speed. You're gonna play removal. You might play some counter spells in there. This deck's gonna be good. I didn't. I didn't realize how many. And, and the fact that they just all have flash is just crazy. Like and that's. It's so wild to me how people are writing it off because it's not Euro. And that like, just doesn't make. You're sense. enabling. Yeah. And Jerry Thompson made a good point. He said he's like they're going to be enabling Euro anyway. Yeah. That's not going yeah. to change. So, so here's the. And here's the thing too, right? It's not like they act rogues, like it's not like rogues can't play a couple cling to dust in their deck exactly. too, and which is also that, an instant. Yeah. So you can just eat the euro, and if you don't eat the euro, you just eat one of their lands or spells and draw a card. So it's just a yeah. one mana cantrip. And not even just that, like you got to look at it like this, like who cares? Like who cares if they play the euro? Yeah, we there, can, are, there are also we can, other decks, yeah. people. There are other decks. We can like, bounce it, yeah, like, and that's a, it. that that brings up a good point because he said, "What if Rogues is good against literally everything else and it's medium against Euro?" I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. If I if I have a, like a fifty fifty against Euro because that's what it is, that's fine, and I'm really good against everything else. Yeah, I'll, I'll take those odds. You know, uh, Rogues will be good. I'm calling that right now. There are I a am, lot I'm, of very good cards. We're so calling not Zach's opinion. Wrong. Uh, yeah. Well, to be fair, I, I will give Zach this. He he made that statement before a lot of these cards got spoiled. I, I would have agreed with Zach's statement before I saw all of this. Like the deck just got so much. Like, yeah. and they're all just like really reasonable cards. Um, no worry. We're about to do some rogue brewing in a moment. Well, we're gonna <laughs> take a gander and see all the rogues because it's cool for those that don't know. Brazen Ball is a rogue. It is. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. From a getting a two for one spell like that. Yeah, the deck just kind of builds itself, and like I said, like Slither Wisp has never had like a good home yet because there just weren't enough actual cards with flash. That was the problem. You don't want to play a bunch of instants in your Slither Wisp deck because that's not a flash spell, right. and it doesn't um, get the the bonus from the the two drop two two that makes them all uncounterable, mm -hmm. and then also makes them one less. But now we just have a bunch of a bunch of cards that are just not going to be able to be countered. They're rogues. They have flash. So you're just going to get combo killed by Slitherwisp in a lot of spots. It's going to yeah. happen, I promise. Like, the right. tech doesn't even need to attack you to kill you. It yeah. will be attacking you, too. But it doesn't need to. And that's the wild thing. Yeah. Like, the deck is going to have reach. And it's... I, honestly, in some ways, it'll feel a little bit like Cat Oven. Because they're just going to kill you while they're putting their cards into play. And, and just don't even need the combat step. Yep. So, um, The next... Uh, we're going to talk about so, uh, a few of these colors cards. 
This is a card that I was actually, I'm actually kind of interested for a um, maternal format. Yeah, is Prefer, it for preferably um, Eldrazi Tron? I thought that immediately. Um, too. Forsaken Monument, yep. five colorless legendary artifact. Colorless creatures get plus two, plus two. Whenever you tap a mana for a um, colorless mana, add an additional colorless. When you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. Boy. This is such a good Karn tutor. Such a good Karn tutor. The fact that you can play this the turn after you play Karn is already awesome. Um, you might even play like one in your main deck too. I like I one. Know. I like one, one main, main one side. side yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, but it just goes so so well into Eldrazi Tron. Crazy good, right? Because yeah. you're already just playing like like imagine your matter is shaper all of a sudden just being a five four. Like I don't exactly. you, I don't usually like that card. I'm gonna like it if it's a five four. Um, also mm -hmm. keep in mind that um it makes your ballistas where they don't die if you oh, want to just yeah, go and, yeah, like, yeah. use all the counters. And you're just gonna gain a bunch of life. It's yep. gonna be so nice. Against, it's gonna be like, actually burn good or... because like burn and stuff could typically if they get those really aggressive hands, this catches you back up. And it just generates so much mana, right? Yep. It turns all your lands into temples, basically all mm -hmm. of them, and for non Eldrazi cards, nonetheless. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is a very good card. Seven Seven Smashers are a yeah, good card yeah, at yeah. the office, yeah, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. That you oh, basically Warping Will can make actual a three three at yeah. instant speed. A three three at instant speed, and you only have to tap all land to do it. One land make a three three because all your lands tap for colorless yep. mana in that deck. So you know this is going to be very very good in Eldrazi Tron for sure. As like you know, either a, just a one of in the board and a one of in the main, or some other configuration. But yeah. the card is very good. Uh, do not sleep on this if you're an eternal player. You you will run into yep. this card. This other one is a um, Lithoform Engine. This is a cool card. It's a four another four colorless um, legendary artifact. It has a couple um, abilities on here. We have two tap it copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Three and tap, copy target insert or sorcery spell you control. You get to choose new targets for the copy. Four and tap, copy target permanent spell you control, and you get to make a token of that copy. This card's sweet. This card's really, really cool. Yeah. I messaged you when I saw this card, because I definitely, when all the stuff is spoiled, want to brew up like just some nonsense, like four or five color deck with this. Because this card with like Omnath and Euro and... Uh, the chromatic ori that seven drop artifact from whatever set it's from that's legal uh this is just like this scar card screams like ali Trazi to me very much would not be surprised at all if he actually builds a deck where this card is playable um this card is cool it's definitely powerful uh i'm, I'm interested to see where it goes because i could see this card being playable in some kind of Ali and Trousy nonsense deck. Oh, yeah. If anybody's going to do it, yeah. Ali will yeah. be the one to take it. And that looks pretty much like that's all the spoilers that we really haven't covered. Yeah, um, Skyclave Relic we didn't talk about. I, I, I think this card's like fine in the Lithoform Engine deck just because it's a, a rock that taps for all colors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it, For those that don't know, it's a, it's a, a three mana colorless artifact. has Kicker 3. It's indestructible which is nice. And then when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you create two tapped tokens uh, that are copies of it. And then it's a rock, that, it's a mana lift, basically. Yeah. It's a mana lift that is indestructible and then has this sweet kicker mode on it. Yep. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a cool card. Yeah. Um, Definitely think that this card is sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the set looks very cool. I, I like how they did the design on this set. This the set design's really nice. Oh. And, you know... We, we didn't even talk about any of, like, really any of the uncommons or commons. No. So there's still tons of stuff oh, yeah. that is probably going to be a good card out of this set that we didn't even mention. Um, but, yeah, there's there is going to be a lot of, of cool stuff coming in this set. And, uh, yeah, like, like we were talking about, Rogues is going to be sick. Um, I would not be surprised at all if that is a very good deck uh, moving forward. Yeah, no. Um, that might be that encounters might both be two new decks that we see emerge out of this um, set. And I expect a lot of rogue this weekend. I do too. I I agree with you. Uh, I um, I think it'd be silly if there was like none. Yeah. Unless everybody really feels like you can't beat Euro, which I think that is so poor. Well, that's just Euro ridiculous anyway. Like that doesn't make sense. <laughs> like it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, here's Saying all you the, can't beat it is crazy. These are the standard rogues. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't know Snoop was a rogue. That's funny. That's hilarious. Well, yeah. we played, but yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take a gander really quick, just so we can see what we have here. Oh, what what here looks good? We know the shape shifter is obvious. Yup, we got the Merfolk Wind Robber. He's a rogue. Yep. Yep, he obviously would be played. Yep. It's a one mana creature and then yeah. does something. There early. was another one mana creature. Ooh, I forget. Ooh, yeah, Rankle's a rogue. Rankle's a rogue too. Oh, which is pretty cool. Yeah, th that is actually really cool. There it is. Thieves Guide Enforcer. There's yeah, yeah. the other that, one. That, that's the one I've been running into a lot um this week online. Yeah. Um and yeah, the card is is sick. I definitely would think this is gonna be blue black by far. Oh yeah, I mean it, it definitely oh. will be blue black. I definitely see it playing some number of copy of Rankles. Like you can see that, yeah. It's definitely gonna be playing Nighthawk Scavenger. Um that's one hundred percent. Yep, could be. No, um, I think that's a lock. They're, they're very high on that. Like, oh, are they? Oh, yeah. They're very high on that card. It's flying, death touch, lifelink. I guess it's going to be pretty big in the deck that's milling a bunch of cards. Yeah, it's going to be milling them to death. Like, yeah. that card. I know it's not Nighthawk or Tarmogoyf. It's not either of those by far. But I think this card is actually going to be really good. It's going to be closing the game out. Yeah. Um, that's why I was telling you earlier. Like, this deck is definitely not going to be all flash. There's no way that this deck was going to be all flash. It's fair. And I don't think that's how you need to build this deck. It's definitely not how you need to build it. It's just like, a, a way to build like, it. I don't even think it's the good way to build it. It's just building it as all flash. Yeah, I mean, it might not like, be. Because um, you just put yourself up. Because, uh, like, flash decks typically, they die the mono red hard. Like, things like that. Like, <clears throat> I think if you're not doing that route, you actually give yourself better ground to actually be successful in those, like, especially yeah, yeah. against those aggressive decks. Well, and the thing is, too, like, Obviously, every card doesn't need to have flash, but a lot of them are just going to have flash. Yeah, I don't. Really I think cool. Slytherin still fits in. Like, yeah. I'm not. I'm not against it because even getting one trigger off of it, it did its job. Yeah, you know, because you look, you got the two drop here. It's funny because you got like the two drop. I wonder does that it doesn't kind of make this ability cost less, unfortunately, but it's still fine. Yeah, four <laughs> drop to Whatever. go, and then put their permit onto the battlefield, like. That's a really good rate. Yeah. Like, I definitely... I'm not going to be playing Rogues this weekend. I can promise that on everything I love. Yep. Um, I don't have enough time to get this configuration Not together. to mention all the wild cards we would need to spend yeah. on it, too. Because there's a lot of rares and randomness. Yeah. It might play Thieving Skydiver. Who knows? Um, a two mana, two one flyer. Uh, the kick is kind of whatever, so it might not be good enough, but yeah. it's a card. It's probably not better than the other two drops that we yeah. have. Yeah. Because we already got the we got this guy in got the deck. This, got the uncounterable thing. Yeah. Um, could definitely play Fairy Vandal in a Slither Wisp deck, too. Wouldn't hate that at all, either. Because it is going to get counters on it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there are, there are a lot of... It is potential. I'm not... I don't want to rule anything out. Yep. Um, and then you, you know, you get your, um, three drops are pretty locked. Yeah. Then this is your big guy at the end, of course. Yep. Like, I really don't feel like, oh, Euro beats us. Like, I think that's a horrible game plan. Like, I don't think you're going to win many games if you're just going to ride off that quick. Yeah. I mean, I just think that's sure. such a poor game plan. Like, like, well, it's not like, <laughs> you know, it's not like Euro is going to be the only playable deck in people standard. People are like, literally acting like they played Euro that is, like ends the game. There's a lot of game left. <laughs> like Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so funny to me. Like Don't be wrong. Euro is obviously an incredible magic card. It's a good card, but um but yeah, just it's so saying, beatable. That, saying that Euro alone is is going to beat an entire archetype um is is a little a little aggressive to say the least. Yeah, just a little bit, a little bit. And they couldn't sort these by mana cost. What is it? CMC. But yeah, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the deck I'm going to play in this weekend. Yep. Because 100% pretty much locked to play this deck. Yep. I mean, that's Mono Green Aggro. Yep. Um, deck didn't lose much. So we're going to go ahead. And while we're here, we're going to do it right here live on the podcast. And we're going to go ahead and build this deck. Yep. Sounds it's going to be a little bit different than the thing that we usually do. Yep, sounds good to me. So it's a good plan. Um, 
yeah, it's it's so, gonna be fun to to do this. <clears throat> so let's talk about mono green. Yep. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the current mono green build. We'll yep. just pull up a one that just did well in the classic or something. Yep. Was it this one? Yep. I don't know what this one says. I don't know what standard Sundays is. So what I did is I just. I don't want standard Sundays. Yeah, I, I just looked at the one that got first in the first standard yeah, challenge, the go. last standard challenge. All right. All right, so then the next thing I do is I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to log into this really quick, and we're going to go ahead and create this deck. Yep. This is going to be fun. We. All right, so the sample, since some Steven doesn't like this card because he didn't want to include it when we we're doing our testing, and that's Stone Coil Serpent. Yep, Stone Coil Serpent, honestly, uh, I just assumed it was rotating for whatever reason because I'm an idiot. Uh, but yeah, that should have been in the deck 100%. And there are a lot of reasons for that, but honestly, I think the, the best reason for it is it's just another thing you can do on turn one or two mm -hmm. when you don't have a one or two drop. Um, so that's why Stone Coil Serpent's so important. Um, the next card that I felt has been pretty good and pretty important is this Wildwood Tracker. Yep. It's not it's out it's not as good as Pelt Collector was. I'm never gonna no. try and say it's as good as Pelt Collector was, but it's a one mana two two almost all the time. And that's just good in an aggro deck. Like a one mana two two is pretty much exactly what an aggressive deck wants to do. It wants yep. to put two power into play on turn one and just start attacking with the dang thing. Yep. So um, the next card is gonna be Scavenging Ooze. Yep. That's easy. Yep. We, the cards that we lost here were like the Trolls and then um, ugh, Pelt Collector. Yep, Troll, Pelt Collector, and then, you know, uh, Vivian, which Garrick is is not as good as Vivian, but it's maybe a replacement. You can also just play different cards. Yeah, um, I think that's the route that... Because the more we played it, on. thought the card was very medium. Yeah, the thing there are a few things that Vivian did better than Garrick. Uh, specifically, what um, it did that was better. The counter stayed. The counter that's stayed the, is, is that's one. That's a big part. That's a big part. But then also, it can interact. It can interact with your opponent's board, which Garrick can't do. Garrick can put more beasts into play, which is cool. But it's definitely not as good as just being able to come down and kill something, which is something Vivian can do. So, mm -hmm. Garrick is certainly playable um, and may end up being correct in the list, but for this weekend, I can certainly see not playing it. Uh, a card that has been a pretty reasonable replacement to Barkhide Troll for us is Nessian Horn Beetle. Mm -hmm. um, in some spots, it's better because it grows bigger. Uh, obviously, in some spots, it's worse, too, because it can get killed, but, um, you know... There, there are ups and downs to it. I, I do like that it's one green, one colorless, so that way you're more able to play either the new man land or Conclave, the thing that draws cards. Um, you can play those colorless lands a little safer when you're yeah. not playing Barkhide Troll. But this, uh, this, the BO is actually pretty cool because it, it actually synergizes with the next card that I'm going to be playing as for, and that's Gem Grazer. Yep. I'm going to be respecting the crap out of Clover. Yep, Clover, I would expect Clover's might be the most popular yeah. archetype this weekend. Clover decks in general, whether yeah. it's the blue-green Clover deck, whether it's black-green Clover. I expect whether, Teamer to be the whether, number yeah, one. Yeah, Teamer, Teamer will probably be number one, but I think other Clover decks are certainly playable too. I'm, yo, I definitely think they're playable. Yeah, and I'm but gonna if just I had to like put my money on it, I would put money on oh, Teamer. Oh, I number agree. One played. I agree. I agree. Um, okay, and then the three drops. Um, pretty easy, Love Struck Beast. Yeah, like, Love Struck Beast, 100%. It's a one yeah. drop and a three drop, and that's yeah. why it's so sweet. Um, very good. Very good. Yep, Love Struck Beast. The next is Garrick's um, whatever. Harbinger. And if you expect fairies to be really popular, this card's going to be nice because they ain't killing it. They can bounce it with Brazen Borrower, and they can block it, but... You know, it's a it's an annoying card for sure. A card that you oh, can't yeah. use kill spells on. Oh yeah. Um, let's have him go ahead and get this a mana put in here really quick because that yeah. one's pretty easy. Yeah. Oh, a card that we didn't really talk about. Um, the ma new man land, which I actually really like the idea of playing the man land in this deck. Sure. Mainly because it's an aggro deck. Like, yeah. No, I agree. Sweet. It might be better than Bonders Enclave. Yeah. Um. And because we're either playing Bonder's Eyeclave or playing the Mainland, um, is why we're not going to be playing Yormo, because there's no yeah. way 
in any world, right. I'm playing a triple right. green spell. And it's okay, because yeah. we have Mammoth that could replace it. I think we've already added cards anyway to the deck, so we had to make yeah. cuts regardless. From I'm playing the, the lands in really quick, yeah. just so I can go ahead and make sure I don't miss anything. So, what was that man land called? I have no idea. I don't have a clue what it's called, if I'm being honest with you. <clears throat> Scryfall, we're back. No, not Scryfall. Mythic Spoiler. Yeah, we got this. We're going to find us a man land. Do, 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 do. Where you at? Crawling Barons. For those that don't know, just to briefly touch it, it's tap, adds a colorless, pay four, um, put two plus one counters on it, and then we can have it become a zero zero elemental creature until the end of turn. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, definitely a good mana sink. Um, it's going to get big, and yeah, I, I think this card is, is definitely playable, for yep. sure. Not sure if it's better than Enclave. I really don't know. I think it'll be close. Um, but I do like that, you know, this can just be aggressive, which is cool. Crawling Barons. So we'll, we'll do that. And then they were playing two castles. Question. Do you know the interaction of what would happen if we mutated onto Barons? Does the mutate creature then go back to our hand or go into play? I don't know. Because you can certainly mutate onto it. It's a non-human. And then it becomes a non-creature, but it, it doesn't... It, it's not like it dies. So I assume the Grazer probably just goes into play at yeah. that point as a 4-4. Four, four. Something we'll want to yeah. know before you play the tournament. Oh, we'll, it could come we'll up. be testing that. Though. Yeah. Like, that's going to be... Yeah, we're definitely... We'll I, make sure we do that yeah, interaction. For those listening, it's Tuesday right now. So yeah. we've got a few days to, to try things out and stuff. Um, and the nice thing is we're not even playing like that many new cards. So for the most part, we can test the deck right now in, in 2021 standard. Um, and the nice thing is in 2021 standard, we should probably just start testing Bonders Enclave and see how that feels. And then when the new cards out come out, test this land, and then you can make your determination mm -hmm. of which one felt better. So there's 25, 50. We have 53 cards, seven slots. Let's go back to this list very quick. Questing Beast. Yeah. Can't forget the questing beast. Uh, that'd be a whoopsie. Be a big punt. There's no way that'd be correct. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> the All card's right. pretty incredible. And then the last card, the four of, was instead of Primal Might, if we're going to be playing, is the new Calendars card. And again, there is a world where maybe, maybe Primal Might is better than that card. I don't think so. But we're going to get a lot of testing in with Primal Might and 2021 standards, so we're definitely going to have a good feel. Yeah, we'll, of we'll know we how good Primal Might is. Yeah. Like, that's the easy part. So this is 57. So we have room for three, three of those in a slot. Mm -hmm. So if that was the case, then we just play three. We'll try out the new one in our list. Um name of that card that's the question inscription that's right i'm not gonna know the names offhand yep inscription of abundance yeah so we got three of them bad boys in this deck all right so that's a 60 yep let's see three yep 60 cards it's pretty much we got four of creatures that's pretty straightforward it's very simple and yeah. being very simple and week one standard is typically where I like to be. Yeah. Um, we've seen it time and time again. We've talked about it on this podcast time and time again. Week one when there are paper tournaments and now it's online, but it's going to be very similar. Aggro decks win week one all the time. It literally happens all the time in standard. It's, it's no secret that Mono Red wins week one standard opens. I would say it wins the open almost 50% of the time, it feels like. It, mm -hmm. that might, that's probably inaccurate, but... Model Red just has good showings week one. Uh, when I did well in that standard Lotus Box tournament, we both played Rakdos. Rakdos did really well that tournament. The the Cat Oven decks, it's an aggro deck. Um, you know, it's a proactive deck. It's not reactive. It's 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 just getting people that you just you want your stuff to be consistent. You don't want to mess with stuff because 
you know, week one, decks aren't aren't solid yet. People haven't figured everything out. With this rogue deck, it's certainly going to be good, but people definitely won't have the numbers right week one. There's no way. There's just too many options for, you know, spells, creatures, uh, lands, you know, all that, sideboard. And with a deck like Mono Green, Mono Red, even like Lurus decks this weekend, Mono Black Lurus, those decks are just so simple. Like, they're just simple. You just put good cards that obviously work in your deck, and you just attack people, and you kill them. Mm -hmm. And I think week one, that's just... That's just typically where where I like to be, and I think typically that's what works for people. Yep. And you know, I mean, I I think I think um, mono green is is a great call for for this upcoming weekend. Um, I think mono red is also a great call. Um, I, obviously, euro decks are good. I have no idea what the best euro deck will be at all. Uh, I don't think anyone knows that, and I think that's why all the all the hype on Euro specifically this week is a little silly because I could very easily see Euro not winning the event this weekend. It'll almost certainly be in top eight, and it's definitely going to be in top eight just because it's going to be overrepresented, I would assume, because yeah. so many people just feel like they have to play the card. But you know, we just saw we just saw an historic Euro only put one deck into top eight, and Sultai wasn't even like that popular obviously it's a different format but like you can beat euro if if you got a good deck it, it, and going under euro is a very reasonable plan extinction event is not great against mono green i'll tell you that right now i i was very unimpressed with that card against mono green when i was playing sultai so much so that i caught an extinction event for a main deck ritual of soot and then had two more ritual of soots in my sideboard because I felt like if I lost the die roll, I could not win that matchup without playing a Ritual of Soot or mm -hmm. having just a hand that was incredible, like tons of two drops and not hand hate. It had to be kill spells because hand hate doesn't get the job done because the deck, Mono Green is just, it has so many cards that just do like the same thing. So, yeah, I, I really think Mono Green is going to be in a nice spot this weekend. I think it's very good against Extinction Event. Ugin's a little slow against you. Like, you're going to kill them often before they play Ugin. Um, yep. And I, I just think it's going to be a really good deck, man. I, I, I'm, I'm confident you'll do well with it. And I, I think I think it's going to put you in a really good position to have success. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm excited to test it this week and, and figure out the numbers on stuff. But yep. I really I'm think this through, is going to be I'm going to recite the list of what I come up with. I'm just throwing some cards in the sideboard right now. I don't know if they're correct by any means. Yeah. Like, that I have no clue. Um, so far, let's talk about the main board. Yeah. Um, it's four Stone Coil Serpent, four Wildwood Tracker, four Nessian Horn Beetle, four Scavenging Ooze, four Garrick's Harbringer, four Lustrug Beast, four Gem Razor, four Questing Beast, two Inscription of Abundance, one The Great Henge, two Castle Garenbrig, two Crawling Barons, 21 Force. Yep. There's the main board. Sideboard right now, which is this one I'm working on, we have two Primal Might. They easily come in over the inscription if we just want to. Make, we need to make our creatures bigger if we need yep. to fight early. It's better. It's a better fight spell, I think, in the early game than the inscription will be. Oh, certainly. And yeah. it's a good switch through. Yeah. Um, two heroic interventions. Um, if we are uh, if we play against Sweepers. like straight up like blue white decks and yep. stuff like that, or we're playing shatters, we can we can draw a card and not let them get rid of Kill our creatures. Anything. Is yep. very big for us. Couple ramp throughs. It's a good way to get extra damage in while we're killing things. Yeah. Um, I put two Garrick Unleash again. You're um, gonna want that card against like blue white. Yeah. It's gonna be a really important. Those card kind there. of decks, I want to have that big. Uh, or that decks big where you just think, hey, I need more trample. Like yeah. there's making a lot of little idiots. I need to get through them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring in. Garrick, and we're gonna respect some mono red this weekend too. So the we're gonna four play Gargaroth. four um, Gargaroth. That's smart. Uh, four That's smart. Gargaroth. I think he's better than a lot of the things like Gem Grazer is not. As, I guess Gem Grazer is fine against them. Yeah, because it kills Annex and it kills um, um, Ember Cleave, which is typically how we're gonna but die. But I think Argos is probably better than Questing Beast in the red matchup. Could be, yeah. Because yeah. uh, I don't think that's actually very. I don't think yeah. Questing Beast is actually very good against yeah. Mono Red. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could easily see cutting um, like the one mana one one that attacks as a two two and that yeah, matchup that's true. too. Um, yeah, I, I, I we'll we'll need to test that matchup. But that the nice thing is that's a pretty easy matchup to test. We're gonna run into Mono Red in twenty twenty one. 
literally you and I could just fire up that matchup and play against each other. Yeah. Um, which might be a good idea with that matchup specifically. And just, yeah, just learn what, what is correct to cut. Because um, mm-hmm. I really don't know. Um, yep, I, I, I like that Beast attacks and blocks, which is good. So we'll, we'll just see what we think. We're going to get a lot of testing in this week. And Yep. Uh, we got two more cards to put in the slots, though. Okay. Um, what should the last two cards be is the big question. Um, yeah, I really don't know. I mean, uh, it's really just going to depend on on what what we're going to be running into. Maybe a third Garrick and like a third uh, heroic intervention. I don't know if blue white's going to be good this weekend, but I'm sure people will try it. So it's just good to have a lot of tools. Um, you play five mana Vivian. Five mana Vivian's a very playable magic. Oh card. yeah, I forgot about Vivian. It's still legal. Um, yeah, I mean we're gonna. We're gonna have a lot of things to mess around with. Oh, this week. What was that name of her monster that? Had yeah, that's the one. <clears throat> that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. The Vivian's actually, I, I like that card a lot. Yeah, me too. Me too, especially against control. Yeah. <sighs> I kind of want to just do two and two on um, Planeswalker split then. Yeah, because I forgot all about that card. Yeah. Because I really like that Vivian. Yeah, it's good. The fact that it just keeps making bodies over so and good. over again. It's so just good. so good. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's the mono green like first draft I would go with. Yeah, it looks good to me. Um, and like I said, we almost have this whole deck just in 2021 standard. So we're going to get to test like even before the new cards come out. Wait, um, what, what is new? Literally Inscription. Right? Is that the only new card in your main oh, deck? Oh, Crawling Baron. Yeah, but that's just... In, in in 2021, we'll just play the one that draws cards. The Conclave's whatever. Yeah. So... Or Bonder's Enclave. So we're just going to learn... We're going to... Because the thing is, we want to test that card anyway. Because I, I personally don't know which one's better. I haven't played Bonder's Conclave yet. Right. I haven't played Mono Green much at all in this standard. We've played it a little bit in some of our videos, but very rarely. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, I think I think it will be close as to which one of those will be better. So it's going to be a really good just like learning. Yeah. You know, I just know I'm locked to play the Hooblin event. I'm locked to play Mono Green. I liked how it felt. Felt really good. We had a really good success rate with it yesterday on yeah. stream. Yep. Um, and that's where I'm at with it. Yeah. It's what I would play too. I yep. definitely think it's it's a great deck. Yep. A really really good deck. Um, this weekend. I'm going to be respectful of everyone's time, and um, we're going to wrap this one up. But well, yeah, I'm excited for um, the new um, standard. is always fun. I've always enjoyed rotation. And I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of tools we get to bring out. It's going to be exciting. I'm really excited to, to mess with the white-green counters deck. Yeah. I'm really excited. You know that. I've been a bit, I've been talking about that since Conclave was yeah. uh, Mentor was on um, first Because one of the lands is green-white, right? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's and literally then, what the deck needs. Yeah. It's just a dual land. Yep. And now we've got yep. a lot of really good cards. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a cycle land that's white and green. I'm pretty sure one of them is white and green, right? There's got to be a white green one in there somewhere. The ban- is there? No, there's not a bant one. Uh, Marty's not white green. Is there seriously not? A- Whatever. We have temple, but is there seriously not a triome with? Gre- oh, Abzan. There's an Abzan. Triome. There is. A- so we've got triome. <laughs> that would be I was so like, funny. What? There's no way. There's a two color combination. It's just because Abzan has been so unplayable in this format that. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, we've got a cycle land, we've got a scry land, and we've got a new land. So our mana's going to be good, good enough at least. Um, and, yeah, there's there's a lot of, like, payoff cards for the counters archetype. So I think yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. Well, green, I want to um, keep working on green-black adventures. I think that card with Joriel is, ex- that deck, I mean, is particularly good. It is good, yeah. Um, I really like that deck. I do want to visit that deck and playing some number of rankles. The original OG used to play yeah, at least yeah. some number. Like, I, I want it as a one of. Yeah. That's how weird as that sounds. Yeah, and there's even a world where, like, because uh, I think Kavartek played... No, Kavartek played the, the old school version, but there was a version that some people played at one of the first uh, Mythic Invitationals that was, like, based around the knight strategy with, like, Smitten Swordmaster and stuff. And that might be worth looking at again, too, because a lot of those black cards... Uh, the adventure ones are just randomly knights, murderous yep. rider, knight. If it wasn't an aggressive week knight. one and I was expecting a lot of cards, like a lot of decks like the Omnath ramp and stuff, 
I would actually, since I'm playing Clover already, I would actually play the one that discards, makes them discard yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah. Because then, yeah. then you make them discard four cards. Yeah, that card's disgusting. Yeah, you know, that card is so funny. They were actually, I know people that are doing that in this pre, this format currently, still it's still currently, yeah. against Sultai. I believe it. Yeah. They're like, hey, Sultai. They were like, Crassus. You're like, all right, discard them all. Yeah, discard everything you just drew. Yeah. Yep, no, it's very powerful. For sure. Yep, very powerful. But no, I'm looking forward next week. Um, it's going to be a cool episode. We're going to be talking Nerd Rage Gaming. Oh, that's gonna we're going to nice. talk. We're going to be talking the NRG series with um, one of the like loyal players over there. Um, I met him when we topped eight. We both made top eight of the modern um, one back in January of last year. Um, we were we. I was on on Dredge. He was on a. I were were Urza. Um, he beat me in the very first round of that, um, the top eight, but, um, he actually, um, knocked Dewey out of top eight contention. Um, so he's him and our whole team. He's like, killed our yeah, team in top yeah. eight. All right, At least know. I made top eight for it. <laughs> ah, I'm, 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 I'm my collar. That's but funny. no, he's a very good guy. Um, I got to know him there. We were, we both had our first PT in Phoenix. Um, very good dude. And I'm, we're going to be bringing him on for the show. All right. Cool. And, yeah. It's just going to be talking NRG. Nice. Like just we're gonna talk about the circuit, the upcoming events, um, what they have done, what the stuff, like their progress, because that's what you want to see. Like out of a local little store in Chicago, um, over there in Buffalo Grove, they took their store from from being just a tiny little F and M store, and now they're like one of the top circuits. Like in my opinion, like they're they're the circuit of the Midwest for sure. Like I'm excited for that. So we'll definitely be lo- looking forward to doing that next week. And then we'll be working on getting our weeks after that together. But in the meantime, we're going to be streaming. Always available on Twitch under Swiss Gaming MTG. Um, you can always find this podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google, YouTube. I make sure that it's always posted on and advertised on YouTube every week on our social media. Yep. Go on Twitch slash Swiss Gaming for that. Facebook slash Swiss Gaming, all the works. And then, of course, me and Steven's information will be posted on here as well. But until next week, this has been Larry along with Steven. We will catch you later.